upon sacred burial ground of the First Nation, with walls that house hidden satanic secrets, as well as the residual energy of 998 violent murders. When it comes to paranormal legend and lore, the West Virginia State Penitentiary has no equal. Hello? There are footsteps in this room right now. It's been a decade since I last investigated this massive prison with haunted grounds that stretch a quarter mile long. But on November 20th, for one night only, I'm returning to host a very special event in which only 20 total tickets are being offered to join me for an overnight investigation of the legendary West Virginia State Penitentiary. I saw it. I mean, that's, I'm shaking. It changes the way you think, bro. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Definitely. And that's what typically screws with your head. Tickets are on sale now. To get yours while they last, visit www.aghtelevision.com. Hey, what's up everybody? Chad Kalick here, and welcome back to the Intercrowded Room Podcast for episode number 173, which we're going to get into in just a second. But first, as you guys saw, I am going back to the West Virginia State Penitentiary. I cannot wait. I am freaking stoked. November 20th, my friends. There were only 13 tickets left to that, so it's good to see that you guys are already pumped about this event. And last but not least, we are going back to the Malvern Manor as well. There are now only 10 tickets to that event left. For information and tickets on both events, click the links in the description box below. So let's get into this because about a month ago, things got pretty wild uh, here in Santa Monica. I'm watching television and all of a sudden I noticed that I'm getting tons of messages on my social media in my email, and it's these photos and videos of crazy lights, which people are telling me to go outside and look south. So I did. I went outside, I looked south. Uh, Whatever it was in the sky was beyond my view, but I know that people from as high north as La Jolla, Dana Point, and all the way down to Ensenada, Mexico, were seeing incredible lights that appeared in the sky. It started out as two lights above the ocean, then three, then five, then six, in which these lights were moving all around, up, down. They would line up and lines would shift. They were doing all kinds of crazy things out over the ocean, in which everybody called into the news stations down there in San Diego, in which they reported on this. But the reporting was very interesting. With that being said, I have three videos that I want to show you here. Now keep in mind that the mass UFO sighting actually took place between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Monday, June 27th. Now this first video is from Channel 8, which this broadcast aired on the afternoon of June 28th, so one day after the mass UFO sighting, while the second video is from Channel 10. This also aired on June 28th, but a few hours later during their evening broadcast. And the third and final video is from Channel 10's evening broadcast on Wednesday, June 29th, which is two days after the mass UFO sighting. Now keep that in mind, because it is relevant, but you'll discover why shortly. But right now, let's watch this first clip. Are they moving? Oh, wow. Too cool. Cool, mysterious, whatever word you want to use, this is what people are talking about. Uh, yeah, it's quite it's creating quite a buzz. These mysterious lights, they appeared right off of our coast here in San Diego. Yeah, they're moving a little bit. You mm-hmm. see five of them, sometimes you see four, but uh, we have CBSH Chris Grohl looking into this now. Uh, what are you seeing here? I see like three different angles of these. Everyone's <laughs> got their own theories at this yeah. point. It, it really is depending on exactly where you are seeing them from or exactly what you are seeing. So let's just start off with 
the obvious. Hello there, lights. Let's just start with the fact that we don't know what these are, just like the people that are chiming in on social media. They are all seeing the group of those lights floating in the sky together, and you don't have to be from out of this world to see them. In fact, you could see them in Bejo, thanks to video from Alan Olson, but we also saw them in Encinitas, Chula Vista, Mission Beach, and of course, in a number of other locations, we know where they were they were spotted across the border as well. Now, these spooky sightings were called into our newsroom around 10 last night. So these aren't videos from a long time ago or even a galaxy far away. This is all happening here. We are working to identifying the floating bulbs of mystery. However, we don't have a concrete answer. San Diego Police Department told us that they think lifeguards told them they could be flares from military exercises. However, Camp Pendleton, NAS North Island, both said that they are unaware of what these things could be. There were also rumors it could be the Imperial Beach 4th of July drone show. However, IBPD said they haven't heard a thing. The truth is out there somewhere. We just don't have the answer yet. So, of course, the question that a lot of people want answered is, are these UFOs? Are they flares? Or maybe a call for a second season of Kenobi? We don't know. It could be a publicity stunt. We really just don't know yet. But, of course, when we do know more, we will be sure to update you on online as well as our CBS 8 app. Eric and okay. A lot of things flying over San Diego, but yeah. uh, this one, mm, it's bizarre. It's a mystery. It really is. I, I will say I've seen mysterious lights in the sky. They were related to the Starlink okay. satellites that were sent out. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Are your guesses as good as we ours? Have, and we have not seen any evidence that there have been any satellite launches right. or anything right. like that going on. And you can see in those videos, again, lights are just sitting there. Yeah. Uh, so hovering. moving pretty slow, hovering. So huh. we'll see. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so with this first video, what's important is that the newscaster says the lifeguards informed him. And I think he means Coast Guards because I live here on the beach and at night, especially 9 p.m. at night, there are no lifeguards out there. And I don't know why anybody would ask lifeguards, uh, you know, to tell them what lights are out over the ocean. That's a little above their pay grade, I believe. And <laughs> so I think he meant Coast Guard. Uh, but he says the lifeguards told him that they believe it's some sort of naval operation in which flares are being dropped, which if that were the case, they would either be using a maritime distress flare that's launched from the boats or would be some sort of flare that's being dropped from a naval aviator, right? But either way, we're talking about military. He says that they contacted NAS North Island and Camp Pendleton here. Those are both military bases in which the Navy operates off of. Now, in both cases, he clearly says the Navy denied having any idea, any knowledge, any information about anything going on involving flares. Okay? It's really important to remember that they contacted the Navy at NAS North Island and Camp Pendleton, and they said, it's not us, we don't know what it is. So as you watch this next video, keep that in mind. Mystery lights in the sky Monday night that left everyone with the same question. What is that? ABC 10 News reporter Sophia Hernandez talked to people who witnessed that spectacle and uncovers what the lights could really be. This was something different. It just was, and it felt something different too. Natasha Reichert and her mother Donna were taking a late night stroll when they saw two pulsating lights in the sky. They raced back to their perch that overlooks La Jolla. They compared the lights to a plane, a boat, and were unsure of what it could be. And these were coming back and going, moving different directions, and and then all of a sudden getting you know clustered together and. Um, yeah, it was just not, it was definitely not of this world. <laughs> the lights could be seen all across San Diego, even from Federico Buren's home in Rosarito, Mexico. It caught my attention and I start, you know, I decided to start recording this to analyze it later. Federico says he thought it had to do with the military. I'm very realistic. I, I, I don't believe in those uh, conspiracy theories or anything like that. You know, I just, I just want an explanation you know, to find out what's going on. While others say the flashing lights that stayed in the sky for roughly 20 minutes can't be explained. Realistically, if they were flares, you would see them flickering. These were not flickering. They were not moving and it, there was a light breeze. So if that was a flare, they would be moving. The San Diego Fire Department told ABC 10 News that the flares could be seen five miles offshore. They believe the orange glow was flares. The Coast Guard told ABC 10 News they believe the Navy was conducting flare training with expired flares. A Coast Guard spokesperson said the reason the flares stayed in the sky is so that distress signals can be seen. However, ABC 10 News is still awaiting confirmation from the Navy.
to make sure this phenomenon was just an earthly coincidence. I felt, you know, awesome that we got to be able to see it, whatever it was. <laughs> Sophia Hernandez, ABC 10 News. Okay, now when I watched this second video, things started getting a little weird to me. First off, the newscaster says they talked to the fire department, who now claims those are flares in the sky. How would the fire department know? There's no connection between the fire department and the Navy. But furthermore, the fire department says they're five miles offshore. How would the fire department know how many miles offshore these lights are? How would they know that? And the reason I say how would they know that is because things over water are very, very difficult to gauge. If you've ever been to like Alcatraz, I see why prisoners at Alcatraz died, like so many of them died trying to swim to San Francisco, because it appears to be so close. When you stand on Alcatraz Island, those lights at night, I'm telling you, they look like they're 100 yards away. It looks like I can easily make it there. You don't realize it's just really misleading. So I don't know how the fire department would become a reliable word to say those lights are, oh, they're five miles out there. And oh, by the way, that's the Navy. How would the fire department know? And again, the only thing we know at this point is that on Channel 8, the previous clip, they spoke to both you know bases and the Navy told them, no, it's not us. On this video, no one has spoken directly to the Navy because... They go on to say that they did speak to the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard said, we believe, not we can confirm, we believe that's the Navy. And they talked about the event going on for 20 minutes. Now that's important, which I'll come back to why that's important later. But they said the lights were glowing for 20 minutes and they alluded to the fact that that's because the flares were old. Which, again, I don't know how the Coast Guard would know what exact flares were being used and when does old mean that flares burn longer maybe they do i don't know that it just it, it struck me as strange if a flare is older that means it hangs in the air longer and burns longer um maybe it does maybe i'm just completely off about that but regardless i just think it's strange that the coast guard is saying oh yeah it's the navy doing this when the navy already said we don't know anything about it and then the fire department is saying it's flares again from who you know the navy they've already said they're not doing it so what is going on here you know what's going on with that being said let's watch the third clip here as things are going to get a little more bizarre remember those mysterious lights spotted off the coast of san diego monday night well tonight the mystery is solved no those lights were not UFOs or aliens. In a statement to CBS 8, the Coast Guard says these lights were flares that were dropped from a Navy C-130 plane. They say it was part of a planned training exercise near San Clemente Island. So why did it appear that these lights were floating in the sky for about an hour, according to our CBS 8 viewers? Well, the Coast Guard says they may have lingered so long because they were attached to parachutes. Okay, so according to this newscaster, 48 hours after this event has occurred, 48 hours after countless people witnessed these lights in the sky, the Coast Guard decided to let them know that it was the Navy. Despite the fact that the Navy already denied knowing anything about this, both NAS North Island and Camp Pendleton were contacted in which they said, we know nothing about these lights in the sky. We have no idea. But the Coast Guard says, nope, it was the Navy. And they go as far as to say it was an aviator. It was a naval drop. In fact, they said it was a C-130. Do you guys know what a C-130 is? I do, because my dad actually used to work on C-130s. <laughs> this is the funniest thing ever, guys. I'm going to show you some footage here in a second of what the C-130 is. And we're going to compare those flares to the flares in the sky over San Diego. But again, I just want to point out how bizarre this is before we look at this footage, that Channel 10 says, out of the blue, the Coast Guard calls them up and says, we can confirm that it was a training mission involving the Navy 
in which a C-130, which is also known as the Angel of Death, <laughs> that a C-130 was dropping flares out over the water. With that being said, if you look on the screen right now, these are the lights that everybody saw off the coast of San Diego, okay? The lights appeared in the sky about 9 p.m., Monday, June 27, and were spotted as far away as Tijuana, Mexico. Observers described them as yellow-orange lights in a pattern. With no clear indication of what the lights could be, dozens began posting photos and videos on social media, questioning what was happening in their night sky. The posts offered several possible sources for the unusual lights, including UFOs or drones from the Imperial Beach Police Department. Okay, that's the weird. San Diego Police really Department to told together. local media on Tuesday morning that the mysterious lights were actually flares being used for military Hi. exercises. Again, here we go again. Yeah. And about that C-130, we're going to do a little comparison here, and you can tell me if you think what everybody saw off the coast of San Diego from northern Mexico all the way up to La Jolla and Dana Point, if you think that was flares from a C-130. I wish my dad was alive right now. He would have so much to say about this because he worked on the C-130. I'm very familiar with what this plane is. He's pointed it out to me many times. And this plane is specifically known for its flares. So, you know, I guess maybe that's why the Coast Guard said it was a C-130 dropping flares. This footage that you're seeing right now, this is footage that civilians captured of the lights in the sky, which it's pretty amazing what they saw. These lights made like a square, they made like a triangle, and they made a long line, two separate lines of three lights. They were uh, clearly seemed to be controlled. Uh, now, if that means, you know, somebody was in it or somebody was driving these things, who knows? Um, but definitely, these were uh, impressive. And people filmed this. Uh, the reports were that this was filmed for over an hour, just barely over an hour, between 9 o'clock to just after 10 o'clock, which we're going to talk a little bit in a second why that's important. But anyways, look at these lights. And in a second, I'm going to show you what it looks like when a C-130 drops flares. You ready for that? Okay. This is a C-130, and you tell me if this is what everybody saw off the coast of San Diego. Are you ready? Here comes the C-130 dropping flares in three, two, one. <laughs> and here's some more footage of the C-130. And even more footage of the C-130, the angel of death dropping flares. Now you tell me, is that the same thing that people saw and filmed from Ensenada to San Diego to La Jolla up to Dana Point? Like, there's no way. That is not what <laughs> the C-130 was not deployed. That was not out there dropping flares over the ocean. And I just find the whole thing bizarre that right away the Navy denies it. But all these other branches keep saying, oh, it's got to be this, it's got to be this. But there are some real problems with what they're saying. The time thing. Now, for some reason, in the second clip, they said that the event lasted for 20 minutes. That's not the case, okay? There's footage of people filming it for over an hour. Plus, if you look right here, there were people on Twitter that were timing it the whole time that were blown away by what they saw. Flares usually, usually burn up after about 60 seconds. And, and don't take my word for this. Google this. Google this. I mean, trust me, I went down a flare rabbit hole. And it's very, very simple. Some flares last about 20 seconds. In fact, I have this footage here. This is a parachute flare, okay, which they talked about supposedly the Coast Guard told Channel 10, oh, the reason why they're up in the sky for so long is because they're parachute flares. Here's a parachute flare. It lasts about 40 seconds. That's what it burns out as. If you look at the C-130, which they say, they say that's the plane we used. If you look at those flares, they burn out fast, fast, real fast. And the problem with that is if you look at these pictures, 
there's like no smoke trail from any of these flares. And if they were burning for that long, there would be a smoke trail. What do I mean by a smoke trail? When these flares burn, they're incredibly bright and the light bounces off the smoke trail and you could see it. Also, if you watch the footage of flares when they drop them, they, they move pretty quickly. They descend pretty damn fast. They certainly don't just stay in the sky and just sit in one spot until it decides to move up, down, right, left, and create like a new formation like a triangle or like two perfect lines of three. In fact, a lot of this footage looks exactly like the Phoenix Lights footage. And they tried to convince over 10,000 witnesses there that they saw flares as well. And there's no way. If you look at the Phoenix Lights, they were moving horizontal. They weren't falling vertical. They were moving you know, horizontally, which is, again, mind-blowing. Like, what are we looking at? And I don't know what we're looking at. I really don't. I have no idea what we're looking at. But I do find a couple of other things very strange that the news did not talk about. If you look at the screen right now, this is a topographical map looking down on San Diego. Basically, from Malibu down to northern Mexico, uh, that whole area we'll talk about in a second. But if we go right here down to San Diego and you look, here's the, here's the airport. This is the San Diego International Airport. They're saying this happened five miles offshore. So the Coast Guard and Channel 10 would like us to believe that the Navy went out and decided to do a bunch of exercises and drop flares, you know, right in the path of where commercial airlines would come in and land their plane, much less a C-130. Could you imagine being like a pilot for American Airlines <laughs> and you're approaching the runway and a C-130 lets off a fucking barrage of the angel of death starburst <laughs> i mean this doesn't make any sense well you could see it's right on the water here lax is the same way it's happened a million times where when you fly into lax they will either give you a northern uh, you know path where you, where you veer off to the santa monica mountains turn around and fly you know dead south or they'll give you a southerly path which you head towards san diego and and cut up and just basically uh, over the water, you ride the coastline of land, or they'll send you straight out over the water, and you turn around and come back and land, because the runways, uh, they're right up at the sand. They run right up to the beach. San Diego is the same way. But yet, none of the news stations were talking about the fact that this happened, you know, essentially right in the pathway you know, of commercial airlines, of the airport. You know, which makes sense to me. That's why the Navy, I think, denied it right away. You know, I'm sure they probably looked at it and went, no, we're not playing war games with commercial pilots flying around on big 747s and shit, you know. Um, the one thing in this whole case that the Navy did is they denied it from the jump. It kept being the, the Coast Guard, you know, that was not only saying it was the Navy, but the Coast Guard was changing their story. The Coast Guard was going, oh, it was 20 minutes long, and those were old flares. And then, oh, I guess now it is 60 because we can't hide it. Oh, and those are parachute flares that were dropped by a C-130, thinking that the average human being is not going to look up a C-130 or even know what it is. You know, it, it reminds me of the Battle of Los Angeles, which took place right off the coastline here, which we'll get to this in a second. But, you know, something appeared on the radar over the water, you know, from Long Beach and came up here to Santa Monica in which, you know, our military shot it with 1,400, 1,400 anti-aircraft rounds and which is on the front times uh, or the front page of the LA Times. The story said we attacked and shot a UFO and it was the Air Force saying it. And the, the following day, they took it back and said, no, it was a weather balloon. And which reporters said, Okay, well, did you retrieve it? Like, how, how it damaged is the weather balloon? In which the response was, yeah, we, we, we missed it. Which was, you know, obviously, <laughs> it was like the scarlet letter on him from that boom point. I mean, it made him look ridiculous. So our Army and our Air Force and our, our, you know, the Air Force couldn't take down a balloon? Is that what you're telling us? 
or was it a UFO? This is just a continuance. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the waters, again, look at this topographical map here, this looking down, you know, from northern, you know, Mexico, uh, just south of this map, actually, from Ensenada, you know, to uh, Tijuana, San Diego, uh, Long Beach, um, Santa Monica, up to Malibu. If you, you know, draw two lines out of here, you'll see this Catalina Island. Now, you see this whole area here of water right here. This is where all of these UFO sightings happen. This is where the Tic Tac footage happened, like, or the Tic Tac encounter with David Fravor. That happened right here. This is where the Battle of Los Angeles happened. This is where the 1992 incident happened, where over 300, 300 objects were seen flying out of the water between Santa Monica and Catalina Island, in which they went over the mountains in Santa Monica and were never seen again. I mean, you could listen to the actual phone calls into the police department of the people that saw that. That all took place right here. This area is like UFO hotspot number one. It just constantly happens. And I'm so surprised that the news didn't say you know, hey, this is, you know, this is the area in which, you know, the TikTok happened. And with that being so big, if, if it was a military procedure, you would think that the Navy, the Coast Guard, everybody else, if they were going to send something up in the sky that was going to light it up like that, in the path of, you know, the airport for oncoming commercial planes, you would think that, you know, they would be on standby to tell the public, hey, that's us. Especially with all the UFO hype right now. You would think that, you you know, your first number you dial for those, you know, Camp Pendleton or NAS would be like, oh, yeah, that's us. That's us, most definitely. You know, you would think that it would be on the news before they did it. Hey, tonight, there's going to be some massive lights out over the coast. Yes, we know this is where the, the Nimitz was. Uh, you know, we know out here is the Tic Tac, like we know this is where all this bizarre shit happens. We know this is where, you know, uh, just north of here is the Battle of Los Angeles. Uh, and, and guys, when I say this is real, this whole like, you know, UFO thing here, as I've said before, I've only had one for sure UFO sighting in my life uh, in which I filmed it. I was actually in Topanga, uh, Topanga Canyon, filming a music video uh, when I saw something in the sky, uh, which is in my 1992 USO documentary. If you haven't seen it, here, I'll play a segment for you right now. Check this out. March 3rd, 2007. While directing a music video in Topanga Canyon, just after blocking the first performance sequence, I took a smoke break. But as I lit my cigarette, I looked down the end of it to see something. When we first showed up, I saw this thing out of the corner of my eye a few times, and it's hard to explain this feeling except to say, I felt like I wasn't supposed to look at it, like I didn't want to look at it. And it was a feeling that I shared with Justin later and was blown away that he actually had the same feeling. It's hard to describe how I knew this was legitimate because like any UFO footage, it's all debatable. It's always debatable, right? But this thing was huge. It moved in the most bizarre fashion. 
it would change shape and there was this feeling that it seemed to be giving me of not to look at it. I know that sounds crazy. You know, as time went by, you know, your mind does what your mind is supposed to do. It starts making sense out of things. And you start coming up with excuses and reasons why it wasn't real, even though I have the footage. It's hard when you see something that defies explanation to just accept it. And that thing changed my life because every time I stopped at a stop sign, I would start looking up. I do it today whenever I have a smoke break. I'll smoke and I'll look up in the air. Uh, I wanted to see it again so bad. And I spent so long trying to find it again, <laughs> trying to just look in the sky and I don't know, like maybe I'd have a better lens and could get closer. Or maybe if I just saw it again, if it was just repeatable, you know, maybe that's a scientific part of my mind. If I just saw it again, then maybe it would be enough for me to say, yes, I'm certain of what this is. You know, we live in a world where we all share eyes on YouTube. And I did come across some footage of somebody else who saw the same exact thing that I did. What was really crazy about this footage, where was it at? Right out over Catalina Island. From where we were standing, up at the top of the mountain, you know, that tree is actually a tree that's probably, I don't know, 30, 40 feet away from me. But we're at the top of a mountain. That thing, that white thing, whatever that is, is massive. And it's way up there in the sky. It's way out over the ocean. Uh, just, you know, stunning. Again, stunning. You know, and I and like I would have given anything, as I say in the in the segment, to to see it again, which I was floored when I started searching, and found out that the same damn object, this large white thing, that changes shape, you know, is being recorded all over the world, which blew my mind. But you know, right out here over the Santa Catalina Channel is considered to be like one of the biggest UFO hot spots in the world read about the history of that all the weird paranormal stuff there uh the the large skeletons of the giants that were stolen from there that'll blow your mind but what'll blow your mind even more is in malibu just off the coast of malibu just off the coast of malibu there was this humming sound that was coming from the ocean that that you can detect today it's still there people detect it all the time and there was this big effort to try to determine what it was in which a bunch of like universities and different explorers, like everybody tried to figure out what this was and they couldn't. But when they got back these sonar readings, there appeared what many people believe to be an underwater base just off, you know, the shores of Malibu. What does it look like? This is what it looks like. Check this out. Look at your screen. Now, if that doesn't look man-made, like there's pillars and a large, you know, circular construction, uh, you know, <laughs> as I said, I, I, I'm not, you know, a geologist. I could not tell you for sure what is man-made and what's not, but that does not look like just nature. It looks like there's something there, and man, there are some hardcore believers of that that they believe the reason there are so many sightings in this area uh, is because, you know, that there's multiple bases that are there. Um, you know, I don't know. If you look at the screen right now, I'll put up some more footage here. These are other, uh, you know, three or four more clips of things that have been filmed out over the water here. <laughs> but it happens almost, almost monthly, man. You know, you get these stories of either they're either on the news or people just talk about it or people see it right out over the water here. <coughs> I still have a bit of a chest cold, guys. I'm sorry. Believe it or not, I got COVID again. Mind bending. Um, but anyways, 
uh, I just think this whole thing is really, really bizarre. Um, you know, it's always hard for me to make the jump to that's aliens. I'm not saying that, but I am saying when you look at everything that happened with these lights in San Diego, uh, yeah, someone, someone's shooting dirty pool. Let's put it that way. <laughs> someone's not being honest about what happened because I can tell you right now, these lights are not the same as these lights. This is, uh, this was quite an episode, man. It was a lot of fun putting it together. It's been a lot of fun experiencing it and just watching something really interesting unfold uh, out here in Southern Cali. So please leave me your thoughts and ideas below in the comments. I'm going to stay on top of it. I will let you guys know, um, you know, what else comes of this story. You know, maybe, maybe nothing. Maybe people just uh, chalk it up as another weird thing or maybe there is more to it. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think it is. And, uh, oh, really quickly, one more thing, guys. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, please do me a favor and click the subscribe button. Click the bell. Make sure you get that message when a new episode comes out. I want to make sure that you guys know every time I post because I absolutely, absolutely love doing these podcasts. And uh, I'm just editing away right now. I am consumed with Harbingers, which is going to blow your mind. Uh, the teaser trailer is coming very soon. Um, but when I put these up, I'm going to make sure you guys get them right away. And I love reading your thoughts and ideas and uh, just your responses to everything. This was a doozy of an episode as well, which I loved, including a lot more video, uh, which uh, the more and more we have assistance with that and somebody else to kind of take on uh, the workload, uh, you know, the more and more of that you guys will see. And we're getting closer to that. We're growing towards it. Uh, last but not least, if you haven't visited our Patreon, please do. That is one of the best ways to help us build uh, towards getting help to cut and edit the podcast. So all I got to do is run my mouth and not <laughs> spend the hours editing, uh, which is next to impossible when I'm editing films like I am now. So um, if you can support us, awesome. If you can't, just keep doing it the way that you have been. Let people know that you love the show. Uh, share it. Repost it. All that good stuff. Okay. Love you guys to death. I will be back tomorrow with more. All the best.